and want to welcome on into the program Jonathan Fahey. Jonathan is our legal analyst, uh, former federal prosecutor as well. And uh, Jonathan, always great to have you on. And I, I thought this was interesting because Jack Smith is at it again. Of course, you all know Jack Smith is the uh, special counsel uh, going after Donald Trump as uh, these are all the January 6th related charges. And now apparently what he's doing or what he has done is he has submitted a detailed dossier to U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin. No fan of Donald Trump, clearly summarizing his two year investigation into Trump's alleged efforts to disrupt the peaceful transfer of power after the 2020 election. And so I I guess from what I understand, and I'm clearly not an attorney, Jonathan Fahey, but so. Is he trying to get some sort of a trial before November? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think what he, what he is trying to do, my understanding, and this is a unique case because of the immunity ruling, is basically show what his case looks like, even if the ex, if the immunity conduct was excised out of his indictment and of his case, and basically showing the judge that they can go forward even without. You know, the conduct that Justice Roberts says, you know, the, what would be official acts or the outer uh, realm of President Trump's official acts as president. The thing that is, I think, interesting about this, and I say interesting meaning troubling about this, is there's no real rush on this thing. You know, they know they're not trying this anytime soon. And my concern is they're filing this with the hope that it will maybe, you know, maybe get leaked or maybe the judge will unseal it. And then all this bad stuff about Donald Trump comes out again. What are we almost October right before the election? And there's no reason. I think we talked about this before a few weeks ago that this thing could have waited because even if the judge rules, President Trump will file a motion to dismiss this indictment saying he's immune and they can't prosecute him based on these these charges based on the Supreme Court's ruling. If Donald Trump loses, he'll have the ability to appeal that to a higher court and ultimately the Supreme Court before trial. So my point is this thing isn't going to trial anytime soon. So I don't know why Merrick Garland didn't just say, why don't we just ask for a stay? The other side, Donald Trump's side, would agree to this and delay this to beyond the election so there's nothing that could sort of interfere or even arguably interfere with the political process but instead they're trying to get yeah they're going full steam ahead which again makes the point that this whole thing's political because normally that's not the way they operate and everything they do seems to be supportive of the argument that they're doing this for political reasons versus legal reasons so that's what bothers me the most about this thing and and you know, I don't know if it'll get leaked, but it's certainly the fact that we already know what what ninety something pages with all right. these footnotes or whatever. We, so they're already basically suggesting there's a ton of evidence of bad stuff that Donald Trump did. Is the implication from the filing, right? right. Um, I don't see how you can get anything else out of it. So again, they should stay out of politics. But of course, this DOJ has spent what three and a half years being heavily into politics. It's yep. hard to probably uh, change change course at this point. You know, the thing is, it, so first of all, yeah, it, it'll be leaked. It'll, I, I do believe that ultimately it will be, uh, given the light of day and then it'll be spoken about ad nauseum incessantly on CNN, MSNBC. The networks probably will cover it as well. And it just gives them, it gives the media an opportunity to talk about something that they care about. But I don't believe the public does. I mean, you look at and, and Jonathan, uh, you you're on uh, Fox uh, Business all the time, and uh, you look at um, the the polling that's out there, and people just don't care about January sixth. I just don't believe that they do, and I don't believe that the American people are going to vote over what they see in this dossier. I, I, I just I just don't. I mean, are you? Have you got the sense from from your travels that this is something that people uh, will vote on? Uh, uh, people will vote on it that are already Democrats and are already voting for Kamala Harris. No one else cares. And I live in D.C. And, you know, there are some people that think it's the, you know, this is world, you know, this is Pearl Harbor. This is, you know, yeah. the Civil War, this was the meteor that extinguished the dinosaurs. I mean, they think it's the worst thing ever. But it, but most people think, you know, like I think 
Gutfeld was saying the other day, it was a bad day. People don't say this was a, like a great thing, but you know, when you put it in perspective, the standard day in Washington D.C., you know, there were much more dangerous areas in Washington D.C. on that very day. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's it's. I think people don't care, but the thing that still benefits them, if they're talking about this issue, meaning CNN, MSNBC, all the the networks, they're not talking about the border, they're not talking about inflation, they're not talking about the economy, they're not talking about crime, all these other things that hurt the Democrats. Yep. So in a weird way, it still probably helps them because. You know, the, the Biden or the Biden Harris Harris Biden campaign has all been about two things abortion and personal destruction of Donald Trump. And that's why they doubled down on threats of democracy after the second uh, assassination attempt. You know, they had to play nice the first one, but now it's too close to the election. And they're just, dub- yeah, they don't care anymore. And yeah. it's kind of interesting how they change course on that. It's like no one even, ha- you wouldn't even know that happened, basically, if you watch the news or listen to them talk. Well, I think part of what's going on, and I know you and I spoke about this, uh, I think it was either this week or late last week, but I think that this is another act of desperation where, you know, the Democrats are trying to get, you know, Jack Smith handing this uh, dossier, two-year investigation to uh, the judge, Tanya Chutkin, leaked, released to the public, whatever it is, because there is internal polling that shows that Donald Trump is going to uh, beat Kamala Harris. And so it's almost like you can, you can, you can smell the desperation by the day. And i got to ask you, um, there is a headline from the Daily Wire. Leftist activist publishes Iran-hacked J.D. Vance dossier so apparently now you and i did speak about this a while ago iran hacks into uh, donald trump's campaign they find this dossier on jd vance because that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to vet the people that you want to work with including obviously a running mate it is hacked and then iran has been giving this material to democrat friendly journalists and been peddling this information and a guy named ken klippenstein has now basically published this dossier he's been banned from x but not before it was published and part of that publishing was the addresses of the children of jd vance is is there no limit I will ask you, Jonathan Fahey, is there no limit that these uh, scumbag Democrats will stoop before they just stop? Yeah, there, <clears throat> there is absolutely no limit at, at all. I think you're exactly right. And it is really interesting and, and ironic because last time, as you know, I mean, last time, 2016, when the, um, you know, remember the John Podesta emails and all this stuff that were leaked for the Hillary Clinton campaign, you know, with his, you know, these anti-Catholic emails. I don't know if they were from him, but, but very offensive stuff and basically showing how the primary was semi set up for her to win. R- really bad stuff. And the story wasn't what was the content of those. It was the fact that they were leaked and the leaking was the story and how bad that was. And they didn't even want to, want to, talk about them but then you go back to like the trump remember the steel obviously you you and your listeners know about the steel dossier oh yes and they 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 did that little trick where they put it all out there and then they stopped talking about but they basically put it all out there um for the public to to hear about and assume it's true and treat it like it's true and the whole time now we know that hillary clinton actually paid for that and and submitted it not directly but through her campaign to the FBI, but it is funny that this story will be, if there's bad stuff about J.D. Vance, it'll be the stuff, it'll be the substance of what is in there, whether or not it's true or can be verified, but it won't be the story of, I, you know, Iran, our number one, I think, enemy in terms of country that actually wants to harm us immediately is probably Iran. They want to harm Donald Trump. They want to harm this country. Um, you know, har- they've been harming our troops for years. And it won't be a story that they're doing it, and this administration will not do a single thing to push back against it, which is really pathetic. They're, you know, they're talking about trying to not only you know interfere in the election, but talking about killing Donald Trump. And this administration is sort of like, uh, oh well, let's just keep negotiating with them. They're sort of a good faith partner on the other side. Oh, let's it, let's it, let's let's continue. I'll, I mean, I'll I'll do one better. Let's continue to allow them to sell oil. 
uh, to China and make millions and millions, probably billions of dollars at some point, if not already, so that they can continue to fund terrorism. I mean, that that's what that's what Joe Biden is uh, allowing to happen when he lifts those sanctions against Iran. I've only got a minute left, uh, Jonathan. Let me ask you real quickly. I am seeing signs that there is internal polling that shows that she's going to lose, that Kamala Harris is going to lose. All of a sudden, she's going to the border. She's challenging Donald Trump to another debate. Uh, she's got uh, Zelensky out there basically campaigning for her, uh, other things as well. She's talking about how she's pro-Second Amendment. Um, are you seeing signs that she may know and the Democrats may know that things aren't great in these battleground states? That's what it seems like, just the way they're acting. Your 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 points are great, and the fact she was talking about wanting to debate them and other things like that. And I think the thing that the, the crack in the campaign seems to be, I mean, it's not exactly like they're getting tough treatment from the media, but they're getting a few you know, serious questions, a little bit of pushback, and it just shows how there's no substance to her whatsoever. And the, the, the tricky thing for her is, it's not like, oh, she needs to go out and let people see more of her or campaign more. The more you see of her, and everyone, both sides, recognize this, the worse she does. So it's almost like, what do you do with this type of candidate? Because she's just this manufactured candidate that they were hoping the media could you know, carry over the finish line. But there's nothing she could do, because if she doesn't interview, at the end of it, everyone can see that she basically, there's nothing there. There's nothing behind this. It's just so embarrassing. And going to the border, I think you're exactly right. But again, does that backfire even on substance, even if she has a great you know, platitudinal speech that somebody writes for her? Isn't this still going to look bad because it highlights the fact that we've had almost now, you know, between three and a half and four years of an open border with people dying, people at risk because of their policies. And every, you know, it's hard for them to try to spin that on Donald Trump or the Senate bill. I mean, they, you know, the media tries to help them along. But, yeah, I do think they have they they show they seem to be showing signs that they're losing and trump seems to be showing signs that they think they're winning based on what they're seeing you know uh, obviously we know they everyone could be wrong <laughs> and things could change so uh, but but yeah i do think you're right all right jonathan always great to talk to you spot on analysis and we'll probably check in with you next week